this couple gave up their baby, 50 years later, they discovered what happened to her. Love is sometimes complicated, sometimes things don't turn out as they should. Every relationship is beset by different problems that test the resilience and endearment of a couple. Well, this one is for the books. The relationship of Dennis Viner and Karen Lehman was harder than most. Love brought them together, but it seemed everything just wasn't going their way. Karen got pregnant at the young age of 15, and even though Dennis, who was then 17, proposed marriage, it didn't happen. Eventually the baby was given up for adoption. Dennis and Karen went on with their lives, and it took decades for them to realize why they were kept apart and what happened to their baby daughter. It was in 1958 when Dennis set eyes on Karen, she was just 13 years old, and he was 15. First love is a very powerful feeling. Dennis was so attracted to Karen. But she was so shy and fragile, he didn't immediately act on his feelings for fear that he might scare her away. After all, they were so young, and this was in the late 1950s, people were much more conservative then. Eventually by 1960, they became high school sweethearts. But it was like two opposites attracting each other. Little did they know what was in store for them. You could say he was the typical American boy next door. When he was plagued by a childhood illness, he vowed to get over it and not let anything stand in his way. His life was filled with hard work and big dreams, just like a normal small town boy. His father was a Buick salesman in St. Paul, Minnesota, and Dennis helped out to earn extra cash. By the time he was in high school, he grew up to be a dapper, good-looking young man and a football star as well. All the young ladies would swoon over this young man. Seems like his dreams were becoming a reality, who doesn't want to be popular with the girls? Well, Dennis was a confident and outspoken young man, Karen was just the opposite, shy and quiet. Being popular was not on her mind, she was more into her studies. And she was a clever girl, she studied all the time. Karen also was inclined to music, she would take time to practice the clarinet. By the end of her freshman year, Karen was a star clarinet player in their school band. She would most likely get an early college acceptance due to her skills and intelligence. But life had something else in store for her. Little did she know. The two lovebirds first chanced upon each other in 1958, but it was only in 1960 when the relationship prospered. Dennis had achieved sports stardom and Karen grew into a beautiful musician. Things were going good for both of them. Dennis decided to invite her to the prom and she immediately said yes. She said later on that all the girls were jealous. Dennis was a prized catch for sure. First love is really powerful, both Dennis and Karen felt as though they were meant to be together forever, soulmates for sure. But life is complicated and sometimes deals you a hard blow. Dennis was smitten by his girlfriend, he would even at times be late for football practices because he was walking her home. He knew his priorities and she was it. Karen also enjoyed the affection from this star athlete. He may not have been the most sophisticated boy in town, but who cares about sophistication when your dream boy is yours for the taking. The romance looked like a fairy tale romance, things were looking good. Dennis had dreams of building a home with his girlfriend, provided she accepts to be his wife. He had things planned out, yet something happened which he didn't plan on. Karen got pregnant and she was only 15 years old. The pregnancy seemed to be a small bump in the road. Dennis did what was considered proper, he proposed to Karen and vowed to care for her and the child as best as he could. But it was obvious that her parents were not thrilled, not just about the pregnancy, but the match itself. And since Karen was a minor and not allowed to make decisions without her parents' consent, it was not up to her. Her parents did not allow the marriage. They had different plans which would devastate both Karen and Dennis they opted to ship Karen to a maternity home. Karen had no choice but to obey her parents, it was the 1960s after all. Dennis could do nothing as well, sad, but that was life back then. Karen was shocked with her parents' decision, why couldn't they see that she and Dennis were so in love? They may have been young, but both were hard workers and could manage a life together. Maternity homes at that time were places where expecting mothers could get free medical care if they could not afford to. The laymans could certainly afford to care for their daughter. However, before the 1970s, maternity homes were also adoption centers for unwed mothers. Giving birth to an illegitimate child was taboo during the time. Karen gave birth to a baby girl, she named her Denise, after her father Dennis. Both she and Dennis were shocked and distraught when their baby was given up for adoption. Dennis even proposed to marry Karen again, but her parents were adamant with their decision. Karen's parents were not the only stumbling block to the couple's fairy tale romance. Dennis had to answer the call of duty and enlisted in the US Army. Karen continued her studies at the University of Minnesota. Both knew that being far away and the demanding life of a soldier would really test their love for each other. But they continued to hang on. Dennis kept sending letters to Karen from his deployment, but he didn't expect her father to hide all his letters from her. 
Sometimes parents believe they are doing the best for their child, Karen's father must have thought so then. Dennis couldn't understand why she would not reply, maybe she had forgotten about him already. Similarly, Karen wondered when would Dennis write to her was he alright. It was obvious the relationship was doomed by then, thanks to Karen's parents. Both Karen and Dennis were heartbroken, and the worst part was not understanding what went wrong. But as they say, life goes on, but not the way they wanted. I went through hell to be with her, but I couldn't. We couldn't be together a tearful Dennis said in an interview later on. Karen graduated college with a Bachelor of Science degree in interior design. She got married and had two children. Dennis finished his military duty and also got married and had children of his own. They had different lives now. It would take 50 years before they would communicate again. It was in October of 2014, Dennis Viner was having dinner at a party with some friends when they started playing parlor games. A friend posed a question to the group if your doctor gave you 60 days to live, who would you want to take out to dinner and just talk to? Dennis answered without hesitation, Karen Lehman. Well, the thought stuck, and a few days later, Dennis got the opportunity to contact his high school sweetheart. He was already separated from his wife then. He opened a LinkedIn profile after encouragement from a friend. He decided to try to see if the technology could help him find his first love. He typed her name and got pleasantly surprised at the results. Finally, Dennis found Karen, her name appeared on the webpage. She was living in Monroe, Washington, and worked in home design, just as she had dreamed of as a little girl. Dennis was so excited, he shouted, that's my lady. The first part was over, he found her. But communicating with her brought about some anxiety, what if she won't respond? The trauma of her not answering his letters was still on his mind, though he explained that she never left his mind. He went this far and was not going to stop. He called her up but had to go through the receptionist. Tell her an old friend of 50 years ago called. My name is Denny he told the receptionist. The receptionist thought it was a prank but luckily texted Karen about the call. Well, good thing for everyone concerned, Karen immediately returned the call. You can just imagine what Karen must have thought and felt when she heard from Dennis. Stunned for sure, she was wondering why it took so long. But like Dennis, she longed to reconnect with her first love and soulmate, whom she thought she had lost forever. At first, the two communicated by email. Eventually they got more comfortable and talked over the phone. Dennis was happy to hear that Karen was also single again, just like him. It seemed fate brought the two lovebirds back, at the right time. They decided to meet in person. Would the love still be there? The two were nervous as well as excited to meet up. Remember, they were already seniors and not the same kids who fell in love. Dennis bought a ticket to Washington. You can just imagine how nervous he must have been. Finally, after so long, he will see his true love again. Karen was equally nervous but waited with equal anticipation. 50 years. The thought was actually shocking. What would it be like seeing him again? What if he was not the same man who stole her heart? It was January 19, 2015, when Dennis made the big step off the plane. Anxious as to how Karen will react was all he could think of. But he knew he was still in love with her he has always been. But would she still love him as well? You can guess what happened when the two met again after 50 years. Their love was as intense as ever, even after so many years apart. They knew they were meant to be together, and this time, nothing will keep them apart again. Just two days after reconnecting, Dennis and Karen fulfilled their decades-long promise to wed. It was wonderful, absolutely wonderful Dennis exclaimed on their belated wedding day. Karen packed up her belongings and flew back to Minnesota with her new hubby. Even while their dream of getting married was fulfilled, something was missing. What happened to their child that Karen's parents put up for adoption? Both of them longed to see their daughter, but they felt that she would not like to see them, given that she was given up for adoption. A chance to explain, maybe, but more than that, the couple wanted their daughter to share their lives, as a family. Dennis felt their daughter would want to see them, though Karen was unsure. Maybe it was guilt that she couldn't do anything at the time. So, a decision was made, Dennis told his wife, I found you now, and my life will be complete if we find our daughter. Needless to say, Karen was deeply moved and finally convinced it was the best thing. They found the adoption agency that handled the adoption during the 60s and sent them a letter requesting them to locate their child. It took a while, but eventually, the agency was able to trace their daughter's whereabouts. The Viner's daughter was a 56-year-old mother of three. She was going by the name of Jean Voxland and not Denise as Karen named her. Surprisingly, she and her family were living in the same state, in Kenyon, Minnesota. A letter from the adoption agency found its way to the Voxland home, saying a family member wanted to get in touch with Jean. But Jean wanted to throw the letter in the garbage, thinking it was a scam. It never crossed her mind that her biological parents would want to look her up. But luckily, her husband Andrew had his suspicions. 
he investigated and found out the letter was real. Jean was shocked when she found out her biological parents were looking for her. Jean actually considered looking for her birth parents in the past, she never expected them to search for her as well. So Jean set up a meeting with her parents through the adoption agency. The Viners were thrilled that she accepted to see them, but it was a bit stressful as well. Dennis hadn't seen her since the day she was born, and Karen only saw her for a few months. Would their daughter understand why she was given up for adoption? Would she even care that it was not their choice to do so? The Viners had to be brave, they so much wanted to see their daughter, whatever the outcome. Finally the day came in late May of 2016, in the office of Lutheran Social Services in St. Paul, Minnesota. With them was an assigned case worker. Everyone was really nervous for sure. It was expected after not seeing each other for such a long time. In the end, Karen realized that Dennis was correct to assume their daughter would appreciate their meeting. A family torn apart, reunited again. It was just the beginning. More was in store for them. Obviously a million thoughts crossed the mind of Jean when she first met her birth parents. You can be certain the adoption issue was on top of the list. There were mixed emotions like her growing up as an adopted child, her adopted mother's recent passing, and the incredible love story of her birth parents and the hell they must have gone through. In time, the relationship with Jean grew. She gets together with her parents every week. I feel like there's been divine intervention here. For us to get together the way we did, everybody had to be in the right place at the right time Jean said in a recent interview. It was a great ending from all the trouble that Karen and Dennis went through. The families came together Karen's son, Dennis's three children, from previous relationships, and Jean and her husband and their three children. It was a clan uniting. But this was just the beginning they decided to become more than just a large family. Enter Viner Companies, a group of companies in furniture and lighting manufacturing. This venture kept the families close to each other. And the family grew we now have five children, nine grandchildren, and five great-grandchildren care said in an interview. Really one big happy family. If you thought this story deserves to be in a book, you would be right. Andrew Voxland, Jean's husband, realized that their story was not just a personal one, but a universal story of undying love and tremendous perseverance that deserves to be told. So, he and Jean started to arrange her diaries with hopes of turning them into a book. Of course, Jean persuaded her parents to help out and tell their life stories. The book that chronicles the amazing story is out How Did You Find Me After All These Years? A family memoir. Since its publication in 2017, the Viners became superstar authors. Their story has traveled the globe, and they travel all over the US to bookstores and libraries to tell their story and sign autographs. Finally a happy ending for Dennis, Karen, and Jean.But, let us give credit also to Andrew, Jean's husband. He was the one who brought them together by believing in the letter sent by the adoption agency. And it was his idea to come out with a book. Needless to say, all their lives have changed for the better, and the stories of Karen and Dennis have been forever immortalized in their book. Dennis never imagined he would ever get to see Karen again, and their daughter. Love does conquer all it seems. The amazing and inspiring story shows that things may not go as expected in the beginning, but never give up hope. If there is hope, anything is possible. Fame and fortune was the least on their minds, being with the one you love finally after all the heartbreak and potholes is what it is all about. Of course, fame and fortune is not a bad thing all's well that ends well.